if you have your Bibles. We're in Luke, the 14th chapter, verses 15 through 24. Luke, the 14th chapter, 15 through 24. And this is what the word of God says. When one of those at the table with him heard this, he said to Jesus, blessed is the one who will eat at the feast in the kingdom of God. Jesus replied, a certain man was preparing a great banquet and invited many guests. At the time of the banquet, he sent his servant to tell those who had been invited, come, for everything is now ready. But they all alike began to make excuses. The first said, I have just bought a field and I must go see it. Please excuse me. Another said, I have just bought five yoke of oxen and I'm on the way to try them out. Please excuse me. Still another said, I just got married, so I can't come. The servant came back and reported this to the master. Then the owner of the house became angry and ordered his servants, go out quickly into the streets and alleys of the towns and bring in the poor, the crippled, the blind, and the lame. Sir, the servant said, what you ordered has been done, but there is still room. Then the master told his servant, go out to the roads and country lanes and compel them to come in so that my house will be full. I tell you, not one of those who were invited will get a taste of my banquet. Amen. This is the word of God. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I want to speak from this subject today. No more excuses. No more excuses. Jesus has been invited to a dinner. They have set up a man who was there who was sick. The Bible says he has a disease called dropsies. It is a swelling of the limbs. And this is on the Sabbath day. Jesus heals the man. The people who invited him, the Pharisees, they are upset with Jesus because Jesus has done something on the Sabbath day that is not allowed. And Jesus tells them this. He says, listen, if you're animal fell in the ditch on the Sabbath, you'll get him out. Why? Because an animal means money. And if your son fell into a ditch on the Sabbath, you'll get your son out, won't you? Because you love him. Listen, he's saying this, that this man who is sick, he also is somebody's son. He is a son of Abraham and he deserves to be rescued. And right now his body is ill and it is his will of God to come in and heal this man. And so he told them this. It's best for you all to become humble or else you'll find yourself not at the banquet of the Lord. In other words, he told them, listen, when you begin to invite people into the house, make sure that you invite somebody that cannot pay you back. Don't invite rich folks who want to scratch your back and then you scratch their back. No, he said, go out and get those who are crippled, those who are lame, those who can't pay you back. And then when the resurrection of the righteous has happened on the day of the Lord, then you will get your reward because you invited somebody who could not pay you back. In other words, when your table starts looking like God's table, then you in the right place with the Lord. When you start doing things the way God says do things, when you can be kind to those who cannot pay you back, when you can be a blessing to those who are down and out, when you can live, lend food and give a helping hand and go and see about the sick when you are doing well, then you are doing the work of the Lord. And then one of them had the nerve to say that we just were, oh, blessed are those who will eat at the Lord's table in the kingdom. And Jesus said, hold on, hold on, hold on. Because many of you who think you're going to be there will not be there. For the same reason I just told you. And, And many of you who you think won't be there, will be there. They always say, you'll be surprised who's going to be in heaven and who won't be in heaven. And and, and so he began to explain this 
parable to them. He said that that was a master, a rich man, who invited many people. And originally, they all accepted the invitation. Yeah. Because he sent out his servants. And the master, they say, uh, in, 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 in theological circles, is God. And they say that the servant that he sent out for the first invitation, they were the Old Testament prophets. And they accepted all of these invitations from Elijah and Jeremiah and Elijah. They, they knew all of them. And, but when he sent the servant for the final invitation, who is Jesus Christ? They all begin to reject and they all begin to make excuses. Lame excuses. One said, listen, I, 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 I just bought a field. I got to go and see this field I bought. First of all, why would you buy something that's not there? You, you don't even know if it's there. You, you haven't even went and saw if the fear was there. You just sending out money that way? It's a lame excuse. The second one said, I just bought five yoke of oxen. First of all, a yoke is two. You just bought ten oxen. That means if you got that kind of money, you're not the one going out to see about them. You got servants. You can send somebody to see about these oxen. You, you got enough money that you can send somebody. So the excuse is so lame. Then the last one, he said, I got married and I just can't come. Either his wife is wearing the pants or, or, or any hand-picked man would never say something like that. He, he would make up a different story because it's his wife who's running the household. But, but these gentlemen refused and rejected the invitation after they had already accepted and these are the same three excuses that we use today for not coming into the house of God yeah, one is all about business. He said, I got to go and buy field. I got to build my brand. I got to grow my territory. We think more about the business of personal matters than we do about God. The other one, he's all about, listen, I got to go to work. We accept overtime on Sundays just to stay out of the house of God. We, I can't be there on Sunday mornings, Reverend, because I'm working. What about Wednesday night? Well, well I'm tired on Wednesday nights. We make all kinds of excuses. The last one says, listen, I got family issues. And people always say, I'm not coming to church. Why? Because, you know, I can't get my wife to go. Do you want to be in heaven or, or do you want to be at home and in hell with your wife? Listen, it is not your wife's relationship that's going to get you to heaven. It is your relationship with Jesus Christ. Stop blaming it on my children. I can't get my children up for service in the morning, Pastor. But they get up every Friday, Monday through Friday to go to school. And you telling me you can't get them up to go to church on Sundays. That's too many excuses. And God says that's time out for excuses. We cannot continue to give God excuses on why we cannot serve him, on why we cannot worship him, on why we cannot come into the house of God. And, and, and you got to continue to trust in the Lord with all of your heart and lean not to your own understanding. Listen, we got to give it all to the Lord. No more excuses. Listen, when you make excuses, you miss out on your blessings. Look what the text says. Verse 17 says, when he sent the servant out, he told them, come on in. Everything is ready. Listen, everything has been prepared. Your blessing is ready. This is not a potluck. He didn't say, hey, you bring paper towels, you bring plates, you bring the meat, you bring the vessels. He said, no, everything is ready. I have paid for everything. Everything is prepared for you. The blessing is ready. Come on in. And when you do not come in, when you make excuses, you miss out on your blessings. I don't know about you, but I need all the blessings that I can get. And I want God to be a blessing to me at all times, just like he is. And I'm not going to pass up on a blessing when God says it's ready. I'm coming in. Here's the second thing. When you make excuses, you anger the master. Look at what the text says. The servant came back and reported, 
all these excuses, he said, then the owner of the house became angry. Listen, you don't want to make God mad. He has invited you. You better start accepting his invitation. You better start accepting his son as your Lord and Savior. If not, you anger God and the wrath of God is coming down on you and this world because you rejected the son of the living God. You rejected the true and the living God. You rejected the image of the invisible God. You rejected God himself. You anger the master. Listen. When you make excuses, somebody's always ready to take your place. You, you're going to miss out on your blessing. You done made the master mad. And listen, somebody going to get all the blessings that you should have had. Why? Because you rejected the offer of the true and the living God. The text says that, and he ordered his servants to go out quickly to the streets and the alleys and to the towns and bring in the poor, the crippled, the blind, the lame. Folks who are considered undesirable, the unwelcome, the outcast, folks who people just don't want around. He said, go and bring them. Everybody who did not want to come, there's somebody to take your place. There's somebody to have your blessing. There's somebody else that will be at the king's table. Why? Because you rejected the master's offer. There's more for him. He says, then go out. I order you go out because why? There's still room. Go bring in the thieves and the tax collectors, the pimps and the prostitutes, the drunkards and the alcoholics, the drug dealers and the drug addicts. You go out and bring them in my house. Why? Because there's still room and there's still room today and even in the house of God. You tell all of the ushers who don't know God, all the choir members who are singing songs that they don't know about, all of the priests who are robbing and stealing and mistreating people. There is still room in the house of God. There is something about the house of God that God says there's room for everybody and I mean business. There's room in the house of God. And the master said, go out to the country lanes. Go outside of the city. Bring in the Gentiles. Bring in folks who don't look like you. Bring in folks who don't act like you. Bring in folks who never been to church before and compel them. That compel means go out and preach the gospel. Go out and tell them why. Because you got to compel them. You got to drag them in kicking and screaming because they don't feel like they deserve to be in the house of God. Let me tell you, there's nothing too bad that you can do that God can't save you from. There is no sin that you have ever committed that the blood of Jesus cannot wash you white as snow. There is nothing that you can do that God cannot do to remove it. He already died for your sins. He already gave up his life and he has done it all. All you got to do is come in and sit down at the table. All you got to do is come in and receive your blessing because it's already been prepared. It's already been done. But here's the last thing. When you make excuses, you are rejected by the master. The text says, in verse 24, I tell you, not one of those who were invited would get a taste of my banquet. Listen, when, when, when you reject the offer, the invitation, you are rejecting God himself. He is the one who sent the invitation out. It's, it's not the pastor. I'm just being obedient to God. It's not the deacons. It's not the elders. It's not the choir. They just singing. It's not the ushers. They just welcoming you in. You are rejecting God himself. But what I like about verse 24 is that Jesus goes from the parable to the personal. Let me read it again. I tell you. Not one of those who are invited will get a taste of my banquet. Jesus said, this is the messianic feast. 
He said, you have rejected me. And because you have rejected me, you will not be present with me when I return. I came as the Lamb of God, the Lamb that will be slain before the foundation of the earth. But I'm coming back as the Lion of Judah. I am the final atonement. I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am prophet and protector and prince of priests. I am the propitiation of God. I am the true and the living God. I am the Lamb of God. I am God in the flesh. He said, you, you will not be in my presence when I come back. You will not be at the feast. Family, friends, loved ones, there's no more excuses on why you cannot accept the invitation of the Lord God. There's no more excuses why you can't surrender to God, why you can't love him with all your heart, your mind, your body, and your soul. That has no more excuses. We need to surrender unto God right now so that God will not reject you in the end. We want to have a place with God. We want to be in the best with God. We want to receive all of his blessings. We definitely don't want to anger him, but we don't want no one to take our place. We got to trust in the Lord. And God will bless you. God will keep you when you put your hands in the hands of the Lord.